I'm Rick, and I want to talk about developing deep purple. That's a spear gun build, not a medical condition. The story so far. I've worked out the design specifications for the spear gun. I bought the hardware, the spear, the mechanism, and so forth. I fine-tuned the gun's measurements to match these pieces of hardware. I'm ready to start the build. The first component to deal with is the stock. I decided to use Tasmanian oak. I purchased three sticks of 18 by 42 millimetres. I selected them so they were straight grained, untwisted and free of knots and splits. The proposed length of the stock is 1.2 metres. I cut the sticks to 1.3 metres. I'll remove the excess later. I laminated the sticks with polyurethane glue. I put them on an aluminium extrusion to hold them flat and clamp them down. I left them overnight for the glue to cure, and the next day I cleaned up all the dribbles. The next job was to shape the stock. I've got some fancy tools that I can use at my woodworking club, but you could do this with simpler tools if you wanted to. Anyway, the idea was to get the stock so that it was circular, but it had a raised spear channel. This was going to involve some tricky shaping. These things work a lot easier and a lot simpler if you worked out before you got onto the machines just exactly what you're going to do and the order in which you're going to do it. I sat down the night before with a piece of paper, a pen and a can of beer and had a good think about it. Before starting on the Tassie Oak, I did a few practice cuts on a piece of scrap pine. The first action was to square up the stock. I did this using a thicknesser. I ended up with a rectangular block, 40 millimetres by 48 millimetres. The extra eight millimetres was for the raised spear channel. I decided which surface was going to be top and I routed a spear channel in it. The diameter of the channel was such that uh, a seven millimetre spear sat nicely in there and it was about three millimetres deep. Next, I cut the finger recesses along the top side of the stock. They make it easy to grasp the spear during loading and they might just lower the water resistance a little too. I used a bandsaw to cut out the recesses. They were eight millimetres deep. Then I round over the corners. I used a 90 millimetre radius round over bit. I'd previously used a handheld router to take the corners off with a round over bit. But this time I tried it on the bench router and it was a lot easier, probably a bit safer too. Later on, the stock's gonna to need to be jointed to the muzzle plate and to the, uh, the handle and butt assembly. There needs to be tenons protruding from the stock to make the joints. The tenons have to be flat-sided, so I needed to cut away some of the round-sided bits that are already there. When I was doing the round overing, I deliberately avoided taking the corners off near the very ends of the stock. I left them square. Cutting off the unwanted sides, I used a bandsaw most of the way and it was much easier to snug the or snug the stock up against the, the fence on the bandsaw because it was square to make sure the corners were neat i used a japanese pull saw to finish off the cut once the rounded sides had been cut away what was remaining was the tenons i trimmed them to length so now i have the stock it's rounded it has an elevated spear channel and it has tenons for joints on the end. This isn't everything I'm going to do to the stock. Later on, I'm going to put some supports in there for underneath the, um, the spear where the um, bridle cut goes and also closer to the trigger mechanism. But that's for later, not now. There'll be more videos in this series and one of them will be the muzzle plate and, the, and another will be the combination of the handle and trigger mechanism and butt piece. Right, right, body for me, what, what?